BC Timbers, Mr. Anton. Now it's time to unload yesterday's score from the island. So we're gonna pull it all off the truck and take it over to the mill here and start figuring out how we want to cut this stuff and prepare it to put up in my house, right? Yep. The plan. Turn so stuff into our we gotta figure out. This is always the fun part, right? Yeah. We'll figure out how to get it off the truck. Oh, this, 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 this time we stacked it nice with the sticker, so we should be able to pull it off real nice. Last time, I'm sure. ourselves hey, a good. special celebrity guest appearance today. What's up, everybody? Grandfield, dude, what brings you out of the office, man? Um, lumber, you know? Love me some good wood. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's true. Who doesn't? That's one right? thing that you like told me when wood. we first met was, Hi, I'm Redbeard, I love good wood. Yeah, and he said, you know, me too. So, let me, let me show you step one of branding. Redbeard showed up looking like he's going to a, a quinceanera. Or I was going to say bar mitzvah, either yeah. way. Gotta wear the, gotta plug the DP. Yeah. So, not about to shoot a vlog. Well, I'm not that is a nice shirt. You're not gonna get it. my easy breezy dirty. What is that needle? Like linen, really thin linens. Nice. It looks like a breeze. Nice. It is. It's like the breezy. Nice. 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 I think we might just want to go with this look. Look at you. I'm not sure. Oh, he's got one up on you, dude. Have you met Jam Pack Josh? Uh uh. Jam Pack Josh? Jam Pack Josh. Jam Pack Josh. Oh, yeah. This is Redbeard, dude. Regular Josh? Yep. Regular Josh. <laughs> Redbeard Josh. Awesome. Dude, it's awesome. <laughs> He's a real authentic hippie. No. Oh. Have you ever oh. met one before? No, dude. Really? Well, no, we saw one at Animal Island. I saw one. <laughs> you saw one in the wild? No, we saw one in the trailer. Remember, dude, the one that was like, uh, yeah, the yeah, market? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. dude, I was like, oh, man, I got to hang out with that person. Yeah, no, any hippie questions you have, yeah. just direct yeah. to this guy. In house right. hippie right here. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> So basically, here's how this works. We bring the wood back from the island, unload it here at Anton's yard, and then Anton has this wood miser, uh, we call it a mill, it's basically a giant saw. So we're gonna put the wood down on there, figure out what areas we wanna cut. What we're trying to do is basically pick off the really nice, uh, like weathered surfaces, right? Because that's what looks really good. You gotta understand, we're not really using this wood right now to be structural. Like these big pieces right behind me, look at this. This kind of stuff, that's gonna hold up a roof. That's gonna be like built go. into the construction of the house. We've already done this part of my house, so now we're just trying to get the aesthetics. We're basically skinning these things. So as we pull off that, you know, an old weathered look, then we can hang those from the ceiling and they become what's called faux beams. So that's what we're doing right now. Although we have used some of this stuff structurally in my house, yep. which we were super concerned about at first because when you first feel this stuff, it feels like uh, it might be rotten, might be old, might be falling apart. Dude, exact opposite. This stuff's hard as a rock. Right? Hard as a rock, it's petrified, dude. It is solid, it's good stuff. Speaking of, aren't you going through a bunch of blades? Yeah, yeah, a bunch of blades. Just destroying them. Because this is an old pile, dude. As we start cutting through these pieces, you're finding these old like dowels and railroad spikes. Basically, whatever they used to assemble this old trestle, that's still in the wood. Nobody went through and pulled that stuff out. When they pulled this thing apart, they basically just used a big tractor and just threw pieces everywhere, so. That's what I love. This history right here. I mean, that's probably what a hundred-year-old bike. Easy, easy, easy. That's cool. Kind of like antiques. I've got a whole bucket of that stuff. Dude. You hippies use these things for like this kind of stuff? You gotta hollow that out. Man. Oh, then you can. Glad <laughs> 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 well, I knew exactly where I was going with that. Yeah. yeah. Can't smoke this hollow pipe. Yeah, you can't smoke hey, iron, Garrett, man. We need some blades, man. We're gonna put a blade on this bad boy. One of the new ones in the box. Nice. So right here, I'm sure you guys probably know this, but when you look at a piece of wood, all these rings right here represent a year of life for the tree. So each ring, as the tree grows, you can tell whether it was like a good year, like a lot of water, a lot of moisture, or if they were kind of lean years, the ring is a little bit tighter and smaller because yep. it didn't grow as fast. So as you start to look at some of this old growth wood, that's what we call it, lots and lots and lots of rings, like anywhere between 100, 150, that means this tree was 150 years old before they cut it down 100 years ago. When you look at timber nowadays, the growth rings are like an inch thick because the trees grow so fast, they're harvested, they're farmed to grow that quickly, and they're cut down when they're 20, 30 years old 
as opposed to 150, 200 years old. So that's what makes this stuff so cool because it's so dense. As these rings are so tight, that means this wood is hard as a rock. So the wood miser, this sawmill, that diesel engine, and this whole thing slides up and down the wood rather than feeding the wood through it. See this big old saw, this blade right here? It's like a giant bandsaw. The problem is, like I said before, this wood is full of salt, sand, rocks, minerals, and metal spikes. So if you start cutting through it, it is just destroying these blades. So didn't you get a special blade for it? Yep, we did. And they've got a special tip. But the, the teeth too. are spread apart to get a little more coarse cut, a little more rough rough cut in this wood. Yeah, the, the, closer, the closer the teeth, the finer the cut, which we don't want a fine yeah. cut. We want that rustic, gnarly. Like this is how the old saws used to be back in the 1800s when they'd cut through the stuff, and that's how you get that rough saw look. Hold it up, ready to go. Fly over, and they're stuck. Dude, dude I was, I was, I had pedals in the metal, dude, out. and once I hit that, just freaking. You should have called me, dude. I couldn't. I was up from like one to four thirty. Really? I just couldn't sleep. Dude, it was fun. Yeah. It was. It, it's got to the point where people are starting to get delirious. He's just That's picking up the front of the five ton, just like <laughs> slamming it around with the track hoe. It's been a while. <laughs> smashing the, the delirious. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Get dude, stuck. you guys used to do that a lot more. Oh, dude, that was like yeah. regular part of the job. Dude, honestly, like that's like a regular other, Tuesday night for every us. Every other yeah. outing. Yeah. Yep. I mean, we, we <clears throat> kind of took a break from that for the most part, but it's still it was refreshing to go out and do it. Yeah. The repo. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We got the island wood that we picked up yesterday. We're gonna build a couple different things. We're gonna skin some pieces that we're gonna use as basically kind of like faux veneers in our house for like some of the ceiling uh, ridge beams and stuff. And then also, since Redbeard decided to join us, we're gonna start cutting some of the initial pieces for a poker table for my friend. Make do some poker. Yeah. Do you say make do some poker? Yeah, man. I just make excited. Do some I, I just excited <laughs> poker. Right, let's make poker table. Let's make do. This is the stuff that you need tomorrow to try to buy. Do like a few thousand dollars. Where are we running the blade through? Across the top? Probably right here. First cut. <laughs> so here's the deal. This piece right here is probably one of the like the lower grade pieces that we'll find out on the island. Why I say that is because right under here, you see it's seen some moisture and some wear and tear. And so when we first started picking this wood off the beach, we thought it was all gonna be just like garbage like this falling apart. But it turns out once you cut it, this is just the surface. You get in there and it's still hard as a rock. So even though this is probably one of the worst pieces, it's still a great piece because to be able to get this texture, like this face, like you just can't recreate that look. It doesn't matter how hard you try. A lot of people try. It's just impossible to recreate a hundred years of history, right? Like right. Get damn close, but that's hard. All to All this mimic. character is impossible to recreate. <laughs> All right, so we go skin the top. Do you want to drive it? Yeah, sure. therapeutic see that's the crazy part like this stuff looks rotten on the outside but it's just the that stuff you get in there and this is still solid so this piece we're cutting here is going to be the rafters right mm -hmm. yeah so nine, nine by four that's what we're doing right now so basically that's a truss trusses are typically the part that it goes on the walls and holds the roof this is going to be a faux truss so yeah. we've already got the you know the house has been framed so this is going to just look give it that timber frame look from the outside yeah this is surely surely purely purely this is solely, solely. purely <laughs> cosmetic 
So we're going nine by four on this piece? Mm -hmm. yep. All right, so now that we've done the cutting outside on the mill, bring the wood inside. And this is where the texturing process happens. This is where basically we make sure we get that finish, that look that we want. And then we're gonna start cutting the joints, cutting, like drilling the holes, basically start putting the puzzle together. And then once it's all together, go over it once more with like a final texture and these things are ready to ship out so easier said than done this process is pretty gnarly do we have the little yellow torch too we need to get that stuff out asap josh i got torches so check this out basically the ends of the wood have a tendency to like split apart over time but it doesn't mean that it's not a good piece of wood since it's not structural remember i told you this is going to be just purely aesthetic what we can do is like basically screw this back together so drill the hole and we take these big screws wherever they're at So, got a couple different types of uh, big wood screws. That's gonna go down through this hole and it'll clamp this whole piece together and then it'll be good as new and it won't fall apart. Nice. DeWalt, <laughs> sponsor me. <laughs> <laughs> that easy, just like that. Where's the chain, That's Josh? How you get brand new. Now we're giving the wood a facelift basically. So since we cut these edges, we don't want like a really, really clean edge. So that's what Alan's doing. He's basically taking his hatchet. This is how they used to cut timber back hundred years ago. They didn't have the sawmills. They literally, somebody would take a tree and they would go out and pop, 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 patch it down. And that's what you call hand hewn. And they'd use an as, that big looking, scoop looking oh, yeah. hatchet. We use this because it's a little more lightweight and a little easier to and you're not trying be to be delicate. Much People always. Mm. You know what I found looks really good? Just kind of oh yeah, we do wire wheel grinder too. I take a big, like a stone grinder, and just, it'll give you that same look on the edges. This is kind of a trade secret. Oh, you're right. So all this, all these accent marks that we made with the chains and the ax, um, you don't really see them, okay? So we take a little torch and we'll go into those areas and burn those areas. See how it lifts the grain and it really defines that area. See that? And then after we go through that, then we take the big torch. Mortise and tenon time. <clears throat> okay, so check this out. This is one of the coolest parts of timber framing. So a true timber framer basically locks the wood together like a puzzle, right? Yep. You don't just take and you put screws in it. Like that's that's cheating. You gotta be able to basically cut these pockets and uh, what do you call that? Is the, which is the mortise and which is the tenon? So the mortise is the square hole. Tenon so is the, the, the yep, tenon square is hole. The and basically, the you're putting this right here is an old uh, mortise and tenon joint. So this was an old piece of timber that basically interlocked with this. Since these were reclaimed, that got cut out, which I'm really grateful when people reclaim timbers. In fact, let me give you a little uh, plug here. If you have any timbers that you want to get rid of, any reclaimed wood, please hit me up. We love this stuff. Like yep. literally anything, even if you think it's garbage, let us know. But when you tear things down, if you have an old barn or an old structure, be gentle with it, right? You see so many people go in with a track hoe and just tear the building down and destroy these perfectly good timbers. Since somebody was able to take this thing down with a little bit of caution, they cut this out, we're able to reuse this piece for another 100 years. You guys would be amazed what we can, what we can actually use. So, like Dave says, save it. 
it. Yeah. Save it. And just tell us about it. We'll come get it. I don't care if you're anywhere in the country. I'll send a truck and pick it up. That's no joke. All right, where are we at? All right, so let's talk about let's talk about what we were doing here. Was the rafters? This right here is what the center? The queen. The, it's the queen. Queen post. So just talk. We could talk about or just do it. Just talk. Okay. So on this particular truss, we've got three posts. The king be in the center, and the queens or some people call that the hammer, right? Oh, hammer hammer post depending on the style of truss this is kind of unique this is our style we've kind of tweaked some things to make it badass that's what makes your st stuff like stand apart is because you've taken all these different design elements from different timber framing over the years and you've kind of combined them into like this smorgasbord of your look i've never seen anybody do it like this have you no like i've seen a lot of different timber work nobody's done it this way you guys have done a good job creating your own look in a industry that's a couple thousand years old. We've we've actually had traditional timber framers come and work with us oh, and, and kind of get frustrated with us <laughs> because we don't do things traditionally. Sorry guys, I love it, respect it, but I kind of got my own way of wanting to do stuff. So yeah, we think outside the box. Clients that want it your way too, like this guy right here. I did not want traditional timber framing at all. In fact, I probably wouldn't have done the house if I had to do just traditional stuff. No knocking and like, like you said, no offense. I just, I don't like that look as much as I like this look. I want it to look old, little medieval, a little, you know, a lot of rustic. So, where were you at? You're cutting, uh, uh, we're gonna do uh, mortises on this one. Um, mortises for, the hole? For the, yeah, for the hole. For the rafters. Talk about, talk about layout. So layout is a key part of this process and we use the square that he's got is a framing square, an L, or this particular square is called a timber framing square. And this bad boy runs, it's pretty expensive, but it's sweet because it lines us up for our different mortises and tenons. It got numbers on the inside. Josh, so. run, dude. Oh. Does he know where he's running? Yeah, what is he doing? <laughs> <laughs> dude, you should never remove that slow again, you hear me? Yep. Thank yep. you. This particular style, Garrett's doing uh, center line right and then you yeah this is all scribe rule, scribe um, rule. so everything's based off plumb and level um, we have a feather mark which is marked on the uh, opposite side and I level the timber based on that face the face that you see um, as you can see the center line is way off to the right this is the side you don't see hmm. um, so basically I made a um, surface going through the timber because you're looking for a plumb face Pl uh, plumb of the, face of the yeah. truss right exactly yeah. so yeah. Uh, these old timbers, they kind of twist over time, so and we're not getting rid of any of the faces. We're not planing, milling, um, so I'm scribing everything together. Um, it's a little um, intuitive, yeah. Um, but you kind of just got to do it by feel, right? Yeah, uh, yeah uh, it's eye. It's not so much um, measurement, right? I mean, there's obviously which is totally in it. counterintuitive to what all construction is yeah because typically right. when you're framing a house everything needs to be square this square that everything's got to match up yeah but now you're dealing with basically something that's twisted like a spiral exactly you gotta somehow plumb it up which is tricky so basically i mean if you could imagine i'm i'm making a perfect um cross inside the timber and that's how i base all my cuts right based off everything off the center line control that cross so. let's do it all right just quickly lay this out it's impressive stuff We got that chain mortiser ready. We want to do a cut first. Chain mortiser? Yeah, I need a cut first. Uh, we grab that speaker. And then Alec, grab a couple shots of me just holding it. This saw does not mess around. No, it doesn't look like saw, it. Saw, dude. That's the old mortise. Look at that grain, man. How tight. Old growth. Oak. That red oak? It's white. White oak? Yeah. The tips, you got some? Okay. That's freaking. Just the tip is square? Right. So, so, yeah. Well, that's what we've done. Go ahead. Yeah. So, here's one of my oh. favorite parts of old timber framing is so they take the mortise and tenon joints 
And like I said, they don't, back in the day, they didn't use, they didn't have the luxury of using these big, you know, grabber screws and these timber framing screws. They had to use wood to secure wood together. So see these old holes right here? That's a 200 year old hole. Basically that dowel would go in there and it would interlock these pieces together. You can see right here, here's an old dowel that came through this piece. Super, super like, like high tolerances, everything in there fits snug together. And the old timber framer, look, you can almost knock that dowel out of there. Just like that's full history right there. And it's the quality right way to do it. And one thing that we've done with our timbers that these guys have just killed it with is we use square dowels. So basically it's a round dowel. We go square head with it. Uh, it's more of like a, I don't want to say it's cheating. It's just a way to not have to use a square dowel because none of these pieces are actually doweled together nowadays, right? right? The dowels are mostly for looks. We use the timber uh, framing screws, use big steel rods to hold everything together because when you're putting a piece like this, like hanging it from your roof, you can't run the risk of an old dowel breaking. So the steel keeps it together. This stuff just makes sure that it stays true to like the time and tradition of timber framing. So that's one of my favorite parts right there. Like it's whatever works for you, Unless whatever works for your client. Where he came from and working with the French, right? Yeah. Or the Japanese, dude. They're they're pretty particular about their stuff. They're it's Canadians. Like. I like I don't like rules, dude. Yeah, it's crazy how defensive they get. Each one of their own style, right? Yeah. Like you do it differently from the way they do it, and all of a sudden you're like a heathen. Yeah. Now I, if my professor you. finds out, <laughs> I'm in trouble. <laughs> I might get you went to school call. for this? Yeah, I have a degree. What? And they teach you a certain style. Um, it's based on the professor, okay. and then we go to different uh, timber frame uh, locations, uh, uh, shops. They're all looking at Garrett and saying, you went to work where? BC Timbers? No. <laughs> <laughs> we love it, university? Uh, it's a college. It's in South Carolina. It's uh, American College of Building Arts. So I have a degree in architectural timber framing. Wow, that's pretty specific. Yeah, pretty awesome. That's a badass degree. So, uh, that is a badass I think degree. Comes with like a chest hair as a degree, I think. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't have any, they yeah, if like you don't have a beard, someone looks yeah. like that. They'll right? throw it on. Well, most, most people that graduate with my degree have beards. Yeah. I can see your chest hair coming out from your shirt. That's how much you know about timber frame. <laughs> is that kind of like a natural. gauge? That's how you know, like, yeah. job interview, first thing you do is yeah. tell me where a v neck. Yeah. Josh. Josh. Right, Josh? No, I don't no. think I can grow see, any. See what? this, this right here. We don't usually do this. This is pretty offensive. What? We've got clients that come over and they go vomit in the toilet because Josh is showing so much of his bosom. It's because I can't show. I don't have any chest hair, so I have to use the heart as replacement. And people it ask, what, what does the heart mean, Josh? Why do you have a heart in the center of your chest? I got a big heart. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh yeah. He's got a big heart, guys. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's cut some holes. So next up, let's get, let's get, next up we go, <laughs> we got no nails, we got no nails in here. Mortise and tenon time. Uh, no, so we're going to basically sure cut the mortise hole, which is that big square rectangular hole that the other piece of wood is going to slide into. Let's pull you, this that. This is like the stuff that nobody does anymore. So well, these like chains, dude, these chains run about 400 to $600 on these chain mortisers, these Makita chain mortisers. They are actually a little cheaper version of a, of, of a higher brand, but they do a good job of what we need, so. I literally looked at like every tool that I had, I'm like, there's no way I can do that. I don't know how to do that. Well, turns out you have to have a special tool. What do you call that? The mortising? Mortiser. Mortiser. Yep. Chainsaw Basically mortiser. Basically like a chainsaw attachment that cuts your hole for you. So that's basically the process to get the, the truss assembly that we're building just about ready for assembly. They obviously got to finish doing all of the uh, mortise and tenon, prep everything, and then time to assemble it. Once it's assembled, you guys will do kind of like a well, last once over finish, make sure everything's clean, yep. get it just beautiful, and then on the trailer to my house and we're gonna install it. I'm pumped for this piece because these are like 200 year old hand hewn beams from an Amish barn. And it's like this old white oak White oak is really hard wood, right? Yeah. That's why really it's so hard. hard on the tools and equipment, but that's also why it lasts forever. So cool stuff. This is not island wood. 
but it actually plays really nice with the island wood, right? Yep, it you goes put hand in pieces hand. together. And Perfect. Yep. Is that against the rules? No, not against the traditional rules. Say so you not don't have to. Traditional rules. I feel like we break a lot. But of the cool thing about that is that's where you get your color difference. Yeah. So on your particular house, we've got the posts that look a little darker than the other pieces. What I love those. about this guy, Anton, don't care. You got so many trolls, everybody online saying, "Do it this way, do it that way." He doesn't care. He just keeps doing it his way, their way. They've got their own style here, and obviously it's working because. Everybody loves your work, right? Yeah. Because you're busy, busier too. this year than you've ever been. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Stay tuned for the install because it's going to be sweet. All right. I always wrap up with the 